Dr. Eva Morales stepped out of the exploration rover, her boots crunching on the dusty lunar surface. She surveyed the abandoned alien research facility, shielding her eyes from the harsh glare of reflected sunlight. The base consisted of several domed structures connected by tubes, half buried in the gray regolith. Ava's pulse quickened. Years of studying signals intelligence on this place were finally going to pay off. She turned to the three members of her hand-picked team emerging from the rover behind her. Lieutenant Hugo Barrett, a brawny ex-military man providing security. Dr. Hidana Patel, the expedition's senior physicist, and Xing Virtue Tao, their stoic mission pilot. No contacts showing on scans, Virtue reported in her usual clipped tone, consulting a device integrated into the sleeve of her suit. We're alone out here. Then let's proceed inside, Eva said. As mission commander, an air of authority came naturally to her and they were venturing into her area of expertise, an abandoned alien base with possible gravitational anomalies. After the long journey here, she could hardly wait to start investigating. They approached the nearest habitat pod port. Eva pulled a mini acetylene torch from her belt and began slicing open the aged alloy seal. Showers of sparks lit up their dark visors as the metal glowed orange under the intense heat. With a final push, the circular hatch creaked open. Eva climbed through first, the others close behind. Her helmet lamp revealed a gloomy corridor lined with strange glyphs etched into the walls. I've studied these symbols for years but never thought I'd stand here looking at the real thing, marveled Patel. His voice held a note of reverence. As they moved deeper inside, scanning devices capable of detecting gravitational fluctuations came online with a rising hum. Virtue scrutinized the output. I'm picking up spatial distortions consistent with our intel, she reported. Highest ambient gravity levels are emanating from a central chamber. Nodding inside her helmet, Ava examined the facility layout Virtue had mapped. Then that's our destination, she declared. Excitement sparked through her at the implication. Their intelligence had been correct. A functional, gravitational manipulation system existed here which raised several pivotal questions. Who were its alien creators? Why had they abandoned this base? And what amazing discoveries lay buried in their encrypted databanks? When they reached the central chamber, a towering two-story structure studded with inactive control consoles surrounding a raised dais, Patel let out an awed gasp. The power readings, still well above ambient, even in standby mode, and the circuit pathways, the level of sophistication. Lost for words, the physicist moved deeper into the chamber, seeking the system's core. Eva climbed onto the central platform, mesmerized by the alien design and elegant aesthetics. Running her glove over a panel, she located the recessed data drives. Digging a transcoder from her pack, she interfaced it with the alien computer. Streams of alien code reflecting eons of collected data scrolled down her visor display. Let's see what secrets you hold, she muttered. Hours passed as she parsed databases, correlating her years of remote analysis against primary sources, unlocked through the transcoder algorithms. Engrossed in deciphering encrypted files related to gravitational portal tests, Ava didn't notice Barrett growing restless while Patel searched below for the chamber's power plant. I've located the portal induction drives, Patel suddenly called out. But I can't interpret these readings. The system utilizes non-baryonic matter as a reactive mass. I would theorize it creates micro-singularities that... It's a conduit through quantum-entangled space-time, Ava exclaimed, surprised realization dawning as the files yielded their secrets. They punch wormholes through folded dimensions. Drunk on discovery, she rapidly cross-referenced data points, seeking portal activation coordinates. If she could reopen an interdimensional doorway, even for a microsecond, the energy signatures could confirm her radical gravitational collapse theory. Her exuberance overrode caution. Finding a promising set of coordinates, Eva entered them into the induction sequencer. For several heartbeats, nothing happened. 
Then with a rising whine, the floor shook beneath their feet. An intense point of distorted space built within the central dais, unleashing powerful spatial distortions. Cracks appeared in the ancient containment fields until finally, with a thunderous detonation, a circular rift exploded open, a swirling dimensional vortex. From this ruptured hole in space-time, a terrifying creature emerged, dropping to the chamber floor. Massive and quadrupedal, the beast appeared composed of dense, overlapping biological armor plates. Curved claws like scimitars extruded from its feet. An elongated head without eyes pivoted toward the team, showing rows of serrated teeth. Before Eva could react, the monstrosity charged, crossing the floor faster than something so large should move. It slammed into Dr. Gabriel Escobar, shredding through his suit instantly. Blood and detritus exploded through gaping tears as Escobar screamed, limbs separating from his ravaged torso. Time froze for Eva at the nightmarish sight. Then Barrett was shouting, raising his plasma cannon. Searing bolts of blue fire slammed the creature sideways. Howling with outrage, it scrambled back toward the still open portal. Barrett kept firing until the rift imploded shut, leaving no trace except a faint spatial distortion in the air. What the hell was that? Barrett demanded, advancing on Eva. She shook her head mutely, overwhelmed by paralyzing shock. What had she unleashed? Her reckless activation of the portal had let loose an ultra-violent creature from some hellish alien dimension. Guilt and horror warred within her, amplified by Gabriel's mangled remains staining the chamber floor. There was no way to know what lay on the other side. Patel said gently, correctly deducing her thoughts. You bear no blame for this unforeseeable tragedy. Eva managed a shaky nod. Maybe that was the only survivor, Barrett said without much conviction. His cannon remained charged and ready. Unlikely given the considerable bioenergy I detected forming around the portal just before it collapsed, Virtue countered. She studied her scanner's display. Readings indicate an escalating flux wave is now building. With dawning alarm, Eva examined Virtue's results. You're correct, she realized. That blast we saw was just the initial precursor. I'm reading a steep energy gradient curve consistent with... More invaders coming through! Barrett interpreted tersely. Suddenly galvanized, Eva activated the nearest console, fingers flying over alien symbols. She circled the team. The portal isn't permanently sealed, just temporarily disrupted from this side. We likely have minutes before they break through from the other dimension. I know that monstrosity wasn't acting alone. Given sufficient time to prepare, I have no doubt you could redesign the portal mechanics to prevent further incursions, Patel noted calmly. But can we seal access quickly with what's available? Eva whirled to the mangled corpse near them. No, we can't wait. Escobar's death proves they mean to invade. We need to block their access point now by any means necessary before we're overrun. Understood, Barrett confirmed, hefting his cannon. Just say the word on targets. Mind racing, Ava weighed their limited options. With sudden inspiration, she grabbed the pulse emitter prototype from her belt. When they come through, use sustained fire to weaken their armored forms. I'll adjust this emitter into a concentrated microwave burst. The radiation should boil them from the inside out. Working swiftly, they clustered defensively around the chamber's sealed rift site, weapons trained on the distortion flickering ominously in midair. Ava felt her heart thundering as energy built toward critical levels. She braced the emitter on a tripod mount, linking it to her wrist console for manual targeting control. Here they come! Barrett warned. Space ruptured. The swirling portal disgorged a tall, bipedal invader, clad in dark metal-like armor. Wielding an ominous double-bladed polearm, the nightmarish apparition glanced around, then bellowed something in a harsh alien tongue. More multi-legged monstrosities resembling vicious reptilian predators spilled from the rift behind their master. Barrett opened fire. Explosive rounds pounded the armored warrior, making it stumble. Alien shrieks filled the chamber as scuttling beasts slammed into the defensive perimeter. Eva ignited the makeshift microwave emitter. 
Unseen radiation washed over the foremost invaders piercing their protective shells. Internal fluids exploded from split carapaces as microwave-cooked aliens died instantly. But more kept coming, their commander raising strange devices that projected protective force shields against Barrett's unrelenting fire. Eva recalibrated her fragile emitter, despairing at the unending hordes passing into their dimension. There's too many, she whispered. As the team retreated toward the central platform step by step, she feared this invasion would overwhelm Earth's defenses in no time. Humanity seemed doomed, unless she could seal off the portal conduits for good. A desperate plan crystallized in Eva's mind. Their beam weapons just might buy her enough time to make it work. Eva stared at Gabriel Escobar's ravaged corpse, bile rising in her throat. If she hadn't recklessly activated the portal, he would still be alive, and they had no idea what other diabolical creatures lurked on the other side, poised to spill through into their universe. We need to evacuate now, she urged. Leaving the dead for later recovery, Eva led the way toward the rover outside. She tried raising NASA mission control on the comm, but got only static. The alien facility seemed eerily abandoned once more. Barrett grabbed her arm just short of the exit hatch, spinning Eva to face him. His eyes bored fiercely into hers from behind his faceplate. We are not abandoning this site, he said vehemently. Escobar knew the risks, same as any of us. You heard the readings. The invaders are massing strength for a major offensive push through the portal. If we leave, nothing stops them from overwhelming Earth. His words doused Eva's panicked flight response like cold water, leaving only chilling clarity. She cursed silently at her momentary weakness. Barrett was right. With the dimensional doorway breached, running would only delay the inevitable. Shutting down the conduit permanently was their only viable course now. Eva turned to Patel and Virtue standing silently nearby. Can we deactivate the portal relativity framework? She asked Patel without preamble. Disrupt the exotic particles sustaining trans-dimensional coherence? The senior physicist slowly nodded. In theory, though collapsing an Einstein-Rosen bridge is wildly unpredictable. He gestured to the facility's lower level. This outpost draws geothermal energy from the moon's core through that solar plasma dynamo. If we induce a cascading system's failure, the resulting thermo-gravitational detonation could generate a small, localized black hole. Destroying the alien portal, and everything else here with it, Virtue concluded tonelessly. We get one shot before their next wave, Barrett pressed. Can you guarantee that dynamo blast seals their access point permanently? Nothing is certain except more deaths if we delay, Patel said. Ava straightened with sudden resolve. Begin charging the dynamo, she instructed Patel. To virtue, she added, Keep scanning. I want updated sensor data on their side. Syrian orbital telemetry indicates a large gravity shadow near the portal locus. Understood, Commander, her pilot replied crisply, consulting her equipment feeds once more. We just need to buy enough time for the detonation sequence, Eva told Barrett and her remaining crew. Hold the entrance chamber at all costs. Earth's survival depends on it. Donning rebreathers to filter contaminants from Escobar's ravaged corpse, Morales and Barrett dragged their fallen comrade into a branching side passage for temporary storage, while Patel descended to the lower dynamo controls. Before joining Barrett barricading the central chamber, Morales secured Escobar's remains inside a utility closet. Though necessary, abandoning a team member bothered her on a deep level. Soon, multiple impacts resounded from the sealed entrance, as the next wave of monstrous entities hurled themselves against the hatchway barriers. Eva flinched despite expecting the assault. How much more violent would these attacks get? Her answer came quicker than expected when, with a resonating clang, the circular doorway hatches flew inward, crashing to the floor. An advanced trio of bipedal invaders strode through, elongated heads swiveling. These hardened warriors carried vicious-looking thermal lances that fired intensely hot plasma arcs, along with compact, 
biosign detectors for tracking enemy life forms. Acting in flawless concert, the three aliens fanned out lances and sensors trained ahead as they cleared the entry zone before signaling more troops forward. Barrett opened fire, but his explosive rounds sparked ineffectively against thick energy shields projected from the invader's bracers. Lance blasts rained down, forcing Barrett and Morales to scramble behind overturned consoles. Drone variants! Morales realized as a burst of fire came from their left, wiping out one attacker's shield projection arc and blasting apart its weapon. Virtue lowered her smoking plasma rifle, face impassive behind her faceplate as she slammed a fresh power pack into the magazine port. Permission to initiate lunatic maneuver delta? She asked Morales. When Morales consented, Virtue broke cover, sprinting right at the shielded aliens. She slid feet first under scything lance fire, downing a second hunter with point-blank shots to its torso, before a biosensor blast incinerated her rifle. Continuing her slide, Virtue unsheathed a carbon-folded blade, surging upright to drive the razor-sharp steel through the last drone's sensor module, disabling it. Yellow ichor sprayed from the mortal wound as Virtue yanked her knife sideways, withdrawing it and dropping her unfamiliar adversary. Area cleared, Barrett confirmed moments later as he emerged from cover. He kicked one fallen drone, scowling down through his faceplate. These three fought too well in tandem, their military models upgraded for assault coordination. And likely the precursors to another mass invasion, Eva agreed, joining him to examine inert alien forms. She indicated power packs and control modules within the combat drone's armor. See the cybernetic interface ports. They're processing data from an external battle net, probably the command mothership Virtue detected earlier. Speaking of Virtue, where is she? Barrett asked, glancing around the corpse-littered room. Their pilot didn't answer his suitcom hail. A weak voice emitted from behind the cover Virtue had used earlier. Here, Lieutenant! They rushed to Virtue's side. She was slumped against the barrier wall, breath coming in short, agonized gasps. The chest plate of her suit showed a gaping, charred hole. Sensor. Blast penetrated. Suit integrity when I engaged the third drone. Virtue managed, before succumbing to a fit of wet coughing. Eva assessed the nasty wound with mounting despair. Virtue's lung was definitely punctured. They had no battlefield medics or proper medical gear. She met Barrett's anguished look helplessly. Nothing could be done for their pilot now except ease her suffering. They made Virtue as comfortable as possible, propping her upright against the wall. As the mortally injured pilot rested with eyes closed, Eva administered painkillers through Virtue's suit injector port. Soon her labored breathing slowed, some tension fading from her lean face. Over the next several minutes, Virtue stubbornly clung to life, displaying that profound grit which made her such an exceptional pilot. When she finally grew still, Eva reached out and gently closed the other woman's empty green eyes. She swallowed hard, fighting an upwelling of grief and fury at this second unnecessary death. She died with honor, Barrett stated gruffly after they carried Virtue's body to lay near Escobar's. His craggy face looked haggard in the stark lights. They stood in mournful silence until the deck shuddered underfoot. Alarms blared through the ancient facility as power levels spiked dangerously in the solar dynamo chamber. They raced back to the barricades just as a shimmering spatial distortion manifested near the room's center. The interdimensional breach widened, becoming a circular portal. Barrett instantly opened fire at the vortex rim while Eva unlimbered her microwave emitter. But no entities emerged from the whirling tunnel. Instead, a complex data transmission in flickering alien code beamed through. Eva's transcoder captured and translated the message automatically over suit comms. What she read sent ice water pouring down her spine. Orders received from Command Nexus. Initiate Stage 3. Conduit expansion for mass invasion and resource harvest of target planet. Deploy assault groups, Beta through Zeta, secure beachhead for occupation armies. Glory to the Eternal Empire. How long until you can detonate the dynamo? 
Eva demanded over comms to Patel in the plasma chamber. His response echoed her own fears. At least 20 minutes, we risk destabilizing containment fields. Grimly, Eva watched the portal vortex stabilize, becoming an opaque tunnel stretching to some nightmarish realm filled with armies ready to conquer Earth. Their defensive perimeter couldn't repel such numbers, and the solar dynamo wouldn't be primed for overload detonation in time. Only one desperate option remained. She opened a channel to Patel and Barrett. Our weapons and demolition plan won't halt their occupation forces. We're out of time. I'm going to infiltrate through the portal conduit before their armadas start deploying. Get me an access point location. What? Barrett asked incredulously. That's insane, Doc. Better than allowing Earth's invasion, she shot back. Patel came on comms. Long-range scans show processing relays near the portal induction core on their side. If you can access data nodes in the Alien Command Nexus, I may be able to transmit a system purge order through your suit transcoder, severing the conduit permanently. Just hurry, Eva said with fresh determination. She was Earth's only hope now. For long minutes, sporadic weapons fire echoed through the complex, as Barrett kept the entry zone clear of scouting drones. Inside the shielded dynamo control room, Patel rapidly fabricated an exotic particle projector from sensor components and plasma storage cells. The phase beam emitter was woefully unstable, but should temporarily disrupt the portal's space-time symmetry enough for Morales to cross through. But with containment fields already destabilizing, they were rapidly running out of time. When Patel finally emerged, Barrett was steadfastly holding position across a pile of broken drones, ignoring injuries from a plasma burst that had breached his shoulder plate. Patel tossed the emitter prototype to Eva along with a small receiver unit. I've encoded the alien system purge sequence, he told her rapidly. Get to those distant Nexus data nodes and link your suit. I'll transmit the shutdown command. Eva practiced moving in the lightweight alien battlesuit taken earlier from one dead commando, hefting her new phasing weapon. Though the armor fit poorly, offering little protection, it should disguise her from cursory inspection during her reckless infiltrator gambit. She faced her two comrades, unaware if she would see them again. Guard that dynamo control room with your lives. When you see the portal collapse, blow the whole damned place. Give those bastards a taste of hell! Trusting Barrett and Patel to stand firm, Ava approached the swirling dimensional vortex as Patel activated the unstable phase emitter prototype. The shimmering portal rippled and distorted under the advanced particle streams. Seizing the moment, Eva dove headfirst through the disrupted tunnel, into the alien's universe. She passed through an oscillating tube of alien design, exiting into Stygian darkness filled with multi-directional sounds, the thunder of vast engines, rumbling machinery, and stomping, shouts, hisses, and hoots from creatures unseen. Eva activated her suit's camouflage skin, and moved cautiously away from the small facility guarding this side of the portal. She appeared to be inside a towering obsidian citadel, surrounded by swirling chaos. Keeping to shadows near the wall, Ava spotted an alien data terminal. Primitive system codes allowed basic access, and she plugged the receiver unit into her suit's transcoder. A translation filter opened the alien nexus network to Patel's ingenuity. Now she just had to buy enough time for him to initiate the conduit shutdown sequence. A thunderous barrage slammed Eva's makeshift barricades. She snapped off a burst from her plasma rifle, dropping the foremost combat drone but more replaced it, these invaders wielding far heavier armor and weapons than prior waves. Multiple contacts breaching perimeter, called Captain Okafor from his gun nest, plasma cannon hammering as he tried slowing the incursion. But drones shrugged off direct hits, returning fire with micronized rail drivers that cored through cover and flesh with horrifying ease. Ava saw Okafor jerk and spasm as hypervelocity spikes pierced his body in a dozen places at once. He crashed backward without a sound, dead before hitting the floor. She cursed helplessly. 
These upgraded cyber drones moved and coordinated attacks with relentless precision no human force could match for long. She had to shut down the portal now, or her whole team would perish. Our defenses are being overwhelmed, Eva admitted over comms as she chucked her last grenade into the drone's flank. The blast radius took down two but more emerged from swirling spatial gateways. Perhaps I should go through the conduit instead, came Patel's measured reply from the protected dynamo control chamber. Your responsibilities as mission commander are too great to risk on such a desperate gambit. His selfless offer brought Eva up short. She had ordered her people into peril, and to their deaths, while she prepared what might be a suicide run herself. Who was she to ask such sacrifice of them? But Patel wasn't done. You've brought us further in understanding the portal conduits than anyone believed possible, he continued gently. But now, we require your vision to carry us through this crisis. I have faith your plan can yet prevail. His words roused Ava from her bitter doubts. Patel was right. She couldn't falter now when Earth's survival still hung in the balance. Humanity needed someone able to achieve the impossible when defeat loomed. That had been her forte her whole career. With fresh determination, she pushed lingering guilt over more dead comrades from her mind. Their sacrifices must not be in vain. She would see this through, whatever the cost. Have the network coordinates been decrypted for transmission? She demanded over comms. Affirmative. Then gear up, Doctor. You're my signal relay going forward. Gather Sergeant Cruz and Private Muller from Delta Squad. I need a technical escort getting to their Nexus data vaults on the other side. Minutes later, Eva, Patel, and two security troopers navigated chaotic tunnels, stretching from the portal facility toward alien command and control bunkers. The corridors were strangely absent of invaders. Unease tickled Eva's senses at the ominous calm. She expected ambushes around any junction. Yet their surreptitious advance continued unmolested. Until the very air seemed to come alive, vibrating with alien hostility. Eva's skin crawled as her inner ear detected building harmonic resonance. Sound trap ahead, she warned. Sonic weapons! No her words were swallowed by an explosion of otherworldly shrieking that hammered the team like a physical blow. Eva collapsed, rigidity fleeing her muscles as synapses misfired. Through pain-clenched eyes, she glimpsed Cruz shove Patel into a maintenance alcove, shielding the scientist with her armored body. The shrieking intensified. Eva's convulsing limbs would no longer respond. A final thunderclap of sound lifted her, tossing the team like leaves before a gale. Then silence reigned. Eva clawed back to consciousness through a mental haze. Phantom echoes of the sonic attack still rang in her ears. She stumbled over to Cruz, who was trying to rise beside an unmoving Patel. Muller! The private! Check on Muller! Eva croaked through her suit comm. If they'd lost their signal tech. Cruz turned to scan up and down the corridor with growing alarm. She swung back to Eva, face bleak behind her visor. She was rearguard when the trap hit! Muller's vitals just went offline. Internal suit monitors showed catastrophic trauma before signal cut out. She's gone, Commander. Another dead. And their worst fears realized. The aliens knew they were coming. A grinding noise echoed from the walls. Dust sifted down as floor plates shifted. Then, with stunning speed, cyborg creatures poured from lateral shafts. Four limbed torsos propelled by an underslung ring of serpentine muscle. Razor fangs lined circular maws built for tunneling through solid rock. Before Eva could react, the nearest creature shot barbed tendrils from its abdomen, spearing Muller's corpse hidden in shadows nearby. It began winching the dead trooper toward its gnashing mouth. No! Cruz shouted in denial, reacting on instinct. She fired her railgun, but the hypervelocity spikes only angered the monsters. Others raced past Muller's killer, swarming over Cruz, dragging her down despite her struggles. Ava's heart clenched at her squadmates' shrieks of defiance and pain. In desperation, Cruz triggered her plasma blade, slashing wildly. She severed one limb, then her own leg below the knee, 
cutting away the grapple hold. Freed of encumbering weight, the wounded sergeant crawled clear of rending fangs just as Eva strafed the tunnel beasts with sustained fire. Together, she and Cruz beat back the vicious creatures until only corpses remained. Shock threatened to overwhelm Eva as she stared down at part of Cruz's severed leg, still twitching inside a cybernetic brace. So much lost already, and they hadn't even reached the data vaults yet. She couldn't accept another casualty. Not when they were so close. Marshalling her shaken resolve, Eva assisted Cruz in fusing her leg stump with biosynthetic sealant to prevent blood loss. She ignored doubts plaguing her, focusing everything on their next obstacle. So long as any hope remained, she must press forward. Leaving Cruz hidden to recover strength, Ava and Patel approached the semi-organic data repository, virtually unguarded. Only a lone, nearly microscopic larval entity crawled across monitoring equipment, trailing mucus secretions behind it. How can we access node data with that hatchling creature blocking controls? Patel asked doubtfully. Ava pushed down frustration, hand straying toward her holstered plasma sidearm. Could she safely eliminate the tiny obstacle? But abruptly killing a seemingly helpless baby, even an alien monstrosity, gave her pause. Was cold-blooded murder necessary, or could she disable the runt creature instead? Her moment of indecision became moot when Lieutenant Barrett burst unexpectedly from concealment alongside them. With a fierce cry, he charged the shielded data core housing the alien hatchling. Snatching up the tiny monster before it could latch biting jaws onto him, Barrett hurled it against power conduits lining the far wall. Sparks erupted as the hatchling shriveled and died. There's your access point, Commander, Barrett declared while alien alarms began wailing. He turned to face Eva and Patel, skin pale from some unnoticed injury. Blood dripped down his chin inside his helmet. Get the code transmitted and seal off their damned portals. This is goodbye. Without waiting for her response, he clasped Eva's shoulder like a comrade in arms, then sprinted from the chamber, snatching up the hatchling carcass as he went. Shouts and weapons discharge erupted seconds later. Undoubtedly buying them time against approaching hunters, Barrett intended making a heroic last stand. Emotion clogged Eva's throat at his selfless actions. Forcing it down, she hurried to the data core, uplinking her suit to begin Patel's shutdown sequence. Back through the portal conduit, the code package went, arriving intact at the transmission station they had left barricaded inside the alien outpost. As Eva desperately worked local controls, she sensed Patel monitoring the upload progress remotely. It's working! he exclaimed. Systems are seizing up! Catastrophic chain reaction propagating from induction arrays to dynamo chambers. The portals are collapsing! His elation snapped Eva from her fog of exhaustion. They had done it. All their struggles and pain had won success. Earth was saved. Until Eva felt the floor tremble beneath her boots. Multiple new vortex tunnels opened nearby, disgorging brigades of hardened assault drones. Alien artillery constructs hovered behind bristling with plasma cannons and rocket batteries. They've summoned reinforcements through secondary conduits before the shutdown reached them, Patel reported in dismay. Ava tried bolstering their decrypted access to halt the new deployments. But the alien networks quickly adapted, locking her out. She slammed a fist against the unresponsive data core in bitter frustration. After coming so far to be denied final victory, when Earth's survival hung by a thread was galling in the extreme. Me Commander, the transmission equipment just took a direct hit! Patel yelled over suit comms. Our emitter array is completely fused. No way now to complete the remote portal shutdown. Then it was over. Ava closed her eyes, succumbing to bleak despair. She had gambled everything on this desperate throw and failed utterly. Soon these legions would gorge on Earth's bounty, enslaving her people. Humanity would become just another mongrel race under aliens who styled themselves eternal overlords. Unless... the dynamo detonation. Even now Patel was preparing to vaporize the whole blasted moon base. She need only buy him time to finish priming the solar plasma explosion. Emerging from the data core, Ava rallied her few able fighters, 
leading them in a hopeless last stand. She alone perhaps could still shuttle through the portal maze to trigger base annihilation manually. She need buy mere minutes for Patel's work. Her valiant troops were overrun swiftly, the last falling just as Eva reached an oscillating tunnel mouth. She paused, peering back at dead and wounded, knowing her life would shortly join their sacrifice. But her death could seal forever these damned conduits that had spewed terror into her world. Ava turned toward flickering vortex, ready to plunge through when her suit comm crackled unexpectedly. Wait, Commander. I'm sending you shutdown code stored in my wetware arm. It was Technician Garcia, the words halting as if racked by great pain. Ava froze, pivoting to see the young tech lying broken at the tunnel mouth, blood pooling beneath him. Somehow, he had crawled this far, refusing to give up. Ava rushed to his side, hope rekindling. Garcia tapped his prosthetic limb which contained an alien code package copied earlier as backup. If she could just reach the mothership controlling all these legions... Take it, Garcia urged raggedly. My legs are crushed. I'm done for. But you can finish this. When Eva hesitated, Garcia grasped her with shocking strength, eyes burning feverishly behind cracked faceplates. I swear, by my soul and my love for Earth, download my code. End those bastards! Hands trembling, Eva accessed the wetware port Garcia pointed out. Her suit assimilated the shutdown package into memory buffers. Garcia sagged back in relief. Now leave me, he whispered. Keel over a few more metal morons on your way out. He smirked, then spasmed once more. When the pain passed, his eyes held proud satisfaction. Eva gripped his good shoulder like a lifeline, echoing his smirk with her own. We stopped one invasion because of your trick arm, son. Let's just see if I can stop a second. She took a step, but Garcia clutched feebly at her again. Make it real for me? His pleading eyes locked onto hers. Tell me I died with honor, as the last sight for a hero heading home with her head high, not whimpering alone in this damn tunnel. His voice broke, and Eva glimpsed the scared boy behind the brave facade. Her vision misted, and she swallowed hard. You have my word, Private Garcia, she managed hoarsely. I'm coming back across space to plant old glory on your chest myself. He tried laughing, then grimaced, coughing up pink fluid. Better be Earth's damn flag, not some alien dish rag. Then his fingers went slack, and his gaze drifted away from Eva toward distant vistas she couldn't see. Garcia had his heroic ending. Now she meant to finish what his sacrifice enabled. When Eva emerged from the tunnels back into the alien fortress enclosure, she was unsurprised to find the command portal sight swarming with hunter packs and assault constructs. She had lost her chameleon skin earlier, so surprise was impossible now. These legions barred her path to the mothership and decisive victory. Teeth bared behind her faceplate, Eva hefted plasma rifle and emitter, eyeing massed enemy formations arrogantly marching to invade her homeland universe. Garcia's code encryption thrummed from her uplink like an avenging heartbeat. Let them come. She had suffered too much, sacrificed too dearly, to be stopped with her goal again in sight. She was the tip of humanity's spear, and it was time to draw alien blood. Emitter flash obscuring her rush, Eva hurtled straight toward the portal's shimmering event horizon without hesitation. Rifle blazing, she slammed through the oscillating tunnel mouth onto a vast, open flight deck. Squatting assault carriers and bulbous dropships extended before her under a seething orange sky. A deathly silence reigned for several seconds as maternal alien commanders eyed this insolent intruder with disbelief. Eva raised her rifle one-handed. Garcia's code rippling down the barrel like Destiny's lightning bolt. I am Ava Morales of Earth, she thundered. Defiance, personified in the alien's own hive sanctuary. And I claim this vessel for all mankind. Her blistering salvo lit up launch bays and ammunition dumps, blinding flame washing back from the mothership's hull. 
Klaxons wailed through hidden corridors as Eva's ravaging firestorm brought apocalypse to this stronghold. Garcia's code lashed out, penetrating vital system nodes, shutting everything down through malignant viral fury. Eva laughed wildly, exulting over the havoc. Let the bastards choke on it! When alien legions finally reacted, a deadly barrage converged on Eva's position. She stood arrogantly firm under the punishing impacts before explosive darkness took her down. But it hardly mattered now, with her mission complete. No power remained to breach Earth's dimensional barriers ever again. Mankind was forever safe. There was so much more Eva wanted to yet do, explore, and discover. But she had paved the way for future generations. Her only regret lay in leaving this battle unfinished, with the enemy not utterly destroyed. But her people would handle that in due course. Eva drifted into peaceful oblivion, trusting other heroic souls to avenge the valiant dead. Garcia and all those resting behind her had not sacrificed for nothing after all. Eva peered around the corridor junction, plasma rifle gripped tightly. The route to main portal controls lay dead ahead, past smashed security gates. But elite hunter-killers stalked those passageways, protecting the alien commander, coordinating transports through the Einstein-Rosen bridge. She faced likely death pressing on without support. But with Earth's fate still balancing between salvation and invasion, there was no choice. She had to reach the portal mainframe before all dimensional barriers collapsed, letting alien armadas pour through unchecked. Eva refused to let her people face enslavement without making the bastards pay in blood for every centimeter gained. Keying her suit comm, Eva addressed the few remaining defenders manning tactical posts throughout the crumbling base. This is Commander Morales. I'm advancing alone on portal controls and the alien general commanding occupation forces. Give me fire support, then prepare all remaining fusion stockpiles for terminal overload. She paused, sweeping her gaze over battered weapons emplacements, still manned by loyal alliance troops, willing to fight to the bitter end beside her. Pride and sorrow gripped Ava in equal measure, facing such brave volunteers selling their lives dearly. It's been an honor serving with you all, she finished thickly. Then squaring her shoulders, weapon ready, Eva sprinted from cover. Immediately, kinetic fire erupted, creating a perimeter barrage, keeping the alien hunters' heads down. In the brief lull, Eva slipped unseen past savage combat forms momentarily distracted. At the end of a lengthy gauntlet stood towering blast doors protecting the portal control center. Peering carefully around the barrier frame, Eva spotted the alien general conferring with walker-mounted escorts. She sighted down her rifle scope, noting vulnerable joints in the bipedal mech's actuator frames. Before she could decide on a clear shot, Lieutenant Sakai's voice cut over the comm. Opening fire with lateral batteries! Instantly, railgun slugs slammed the alien walkers from an angle, shredding armor plating. Sparks flew from damaged joints and servos. One walker crashed sideways into its partner mech before toppling. The sudden barrage left the alien general exposed, its shield perimeter disrupted. Eva instantly switched aim, squeezing her rifle trigger. Plasma bolts spent themselves against the alien commander's personal force field. Cursing, she ceased fire as it turned ponderously, seeking the source of renewed resistance. Through her sights, Eva watched it raise one elongated forelimb toward Sakai's gun nest. A horrified realization dawned that it was wielding some kind of integrated weapon. Blinding purple-white fire erupted soundlessly from the alien's palm toward Sakai's bunker. Brace for impact! Eva screamed reflexively. Then Sakai's transmitter went dead amidst an earth-shaking detonation. Debris fountained high into the toxic atmosphere from a gutted section of prefab shelters. Another loyal soul lost. Eva bit her tongue until she tasted blood. Sakai's sacrifice must not be wasted. She again lined up the general's skull-like head, only for more crystal-sheathed walkers to appear, obstructing any clear shot. Guttural alien chatter echoed from a hundred monstrous throats, while transport craft descended through rent atmospheric shields overhead. Eva's chance was slipping away. 
In desperation, she hailed the base defenders. Disable those fusion stockpiles now, and vent plasma conduits here to Sector 12. I need firepower to drop those blast shields. Tech Officer Rojas responded, voice brisk with no time for grief, a kindred spirit. On it, ma'am! Just tell me when to blow emergency seals on the loading vaults. Eva watched the bridge entrance, willing some opportunity. Now, Petty Officer, merge storage cells and vent directly here through coolant pipes. Give me maximum yield. Minutes later, a deep rumble reverberated through deck plating under Ava's armored boots. Intense heat built against corridor junctions, reinforced to channel and focus explosive energy like shaped demolition charges. Tech manuals warned this was suicidal desperation. But Earth itself faced annihilation if the alien beachhead kept expanding. Behind Eva, emergency bulkheads slammed down, sealing the control center. She had her window. Brace for plasma impact, Eva shouted. Then sun-hot fire erupted against straining doors, melting through to shatter massive locking bolts. Howling atmosphere drafted inside with hurricane force as cutters finished weakening the barrier frame. But the alien general had lost any margin for error. Through collapsing gates, Eva fired point-blank, punching molten craters in crystal armor. Dark oily fluid sprayed as the towering creature sagged. Yet still it came on. Evil ambition focused solely toward her. Eva felt banshee fury take possession. If this immortal thing wanted her life, she would charge straight down its vile throat. She dropped her overheated rifle, drawing her monomolecular blade. Before she could begin that fatal rush, New detonations rocked the complex rear areas. Multiple fusion cores lost magnetic constriction, matter meeting antimatter in sudden, surging annihilation. For a brief instant, rival figures, human and alien, stood framed in a burning corona. Then overloaded generators reached overload criticality. Ava seized one last glimpse of Rojas fighting to breach cooling containment so she might shut this damn portal forever. Raw radiation seared nearby corridors as Eva felt herself flung bodily through disintegrating gates by a wall of scouring plasma. Seconds or years later, Eva clawed back to blistered awareness. Pain threatened to drag her under. Plasma scoring, rad toxin accumulation, and sheer battering when she had been tossed aside like so much debris. Her body armor barely functioned, damaged medical nanites unable to cope with such profound trauma. She tried crawling forward by inches, before realizing there was nowhere left to go. The route behind ended abruptly in a glowing lake of molten alloy and slag. No way back. She and the others still somehow clinging to life in this hellhole were entombed. Static crackled over dying comms from the heavily shielded dynamo room. Dr. Patel's genteel tones held untold agony, yet proved he still survived but not for long amidst the heavy radioactive contamination. His words emerged punctuated by tortured wheezing. Well done, Commander! The overload cascade successfully disrupted portal stability matrices. But antimatter, shielding has failed. This whole zone will suffer terminal bombardment once the containment field collapses. So Patel yet lived, and the plan had succeeded despite horrific cost. Even now, Lethal radiation was breaking down molecular bonds between their universe and the alien's hellish origin dimension. Earth had precious hours before pathways stabilized, allowing fresh enemy legions through. Now every second's delay, Eva purchased improved chances for human civilization's survival. Despair and rage churned within as Eva used her blade like a python, levering upward despite protesting injuries. Aliens had battered down the control center doors, their general entering over sparking, glowing rubble to claim victory. Through swirling smoke, Ava glimpsed a lone technician still defiantly manning the portal operations console. Perez was his name. He continued inputting coordinates as the towering alien warlord closed on him, energy blade forming above one clawed hand. Perez had seconds before death claimed him, yet he persisted with his vital task. Ava would see Perez receive a champion's honors or die herself in the attempt. 
She stumbled those last agonizing meters as Perez turned, ceremonial sidearm raised against the alien towering twice his height. His shots caromed away impotently, but the brave tech refused to yield. A valiant snarl twisted Perez's bearded face just before the alien impaled him. His weapon discharged, smoking against its torso, to no effect. Perez sagged, hanging limply from one cruel talon, before being contemptuously cast down discarded metal sheeting. Everything narrowed to crystal clarity for Eva. Some primeval code older than mankind demanded death for that desecration. Reason fled. All civilization's ethical norms burned away in a primordial desire to rend and tear. With a soul-shattering cry of pure wrath, she flew across debris, prosthetic claws fully extended. Her recklessly launched body never reached the intended target. Instead, a heavy discharge struck her from behind. Crumbling metal plating broke Eva's heedless charge. She sprawled awkwardly, her likewise discarded blade visible through swirling smoke, but impossibly far away. Resurgent pain signals warned of multiple bleeds and organ damage now compromising her chance for decisive action. Yet closer details on Perez drew her feeble attention, the slumped but still active console now showing dimensional coordinates. Of course. In his last moments, the brave tech had manually entered a destination for her. Perhaps some vulnerability within the alien's home nexus. Ava crawled that short distance in blank agony, linking her suit to Perez's console. Sure enough, the system prompted for portal activation, with Perez's intended exit point displayed. She struggled closer, cradling the dead man's head. His sightless eyes seemed to approve what she must do next. I'll carry this through for both of us, Jax, Ava whispered hoarsely, referencing the ballsy, inspiring persona Perez had embraced during quiet moments planetside. And make sure Earth knows another goddamn hero died under alien guns this day. Keying the final activation code, Eva watched the chamber portal spiral open. Shouts and weapons discharge echoed through burning corridors behind her, drawing closer. She dared not hesitate, despite lacking any means of support. Perez had gifted her an opportunity from his own death. She must seize that chance, while her wounded body retained strength enough to make transit. With a last lingering look at Perez's ravaged corpse behind her, Eva heaved herself up and over the operation's bridge railing. Her body plunged into swirling azure mists, alien science transporting her across light years in an instant. Whatever fate awaited now, in these final moments Eva stood proud as both avatar and champion for everything Earth represented. No finer way existed to die among the stars. Yet she found herself still drawing breath when the disorientation passed. Shapes resolved from the glowing fog, preposterously gigantic constructs towering hundreds of meters overhead. Eva floated in freefall through an orbital scaffolding network with armed warships moving ponderously against nearby planets. It was a fleet mobilization yard, she realized, a staging area for deep space assault groups. Frozen in disbelief, Eva took in hourglass cruisers bristling with plasma casters and torpedo tubes, bulbous dropships clinging to their flanks like parasite offspring, awaiting a chance to disgorge mechanized invasion forces. Clusters of dagger-shaped fighters swirled overhead, while capital ships loaded fresh antimatter fuel cells. A command nexus indeed, but not the aliens' homeworld staging ground, as Perez had likely intended. Instead, this was a regional, rally point and military transit hub. Alien script painted ominous sigils onto hull plating, while harsh commands and mustering horns echoed through the giant construct. The very air seemed infused with martial rhythms and the smell of seared metal. Grim understanding sank cold claws into Eva's churning gut. However brave and determined Perez's last act had been, he lacked means to target anywhere beyond simple line-of-sight coordinates. So Eva found herself alone and unsupported deep inside a functioning alien fleet base. She rested one gauntlet against a nearby strut, channeling both profound sorrow and towering rage that so many valiant lives had now purchased so little. No getting back, 
she realized bleakly. The portal conduit linking this depot to the Moon Discovery outpost had been her slim chance. Now both entry and any exit were severed. By sacrificing themselves, Dr. Patel and the other defenders had stranded Ava light years from Earth. She was utterly alone against an entire armada. Her wrecked body armor barely sealed against vacuum and offered no protection in combat. She possessed only her prosthetic claws and monomolecular blade, taken earlier as trophies from alien casualties. The most Ava could manage now was a suicidal rush at nearby fuel bunkers or munition stores, inflicting some final punitive damage through proxy. A fiery explosion blossomed soundlessly overhead, amplified through the orbital yard's modular docking arms. Eva traced the detonation to an assault carrier dying in sputtering secondary eruptions. Scores of escape pods jettisoned away, evidence of onboard catastrophe overtaking command systems and crew. Squinting against the glare, Eva felt an unhinged giggle threaten to emerge. So, the disruptor agent Garcia had copied into her suit processors, retained sufficient strength to penetrate local data networks after all. She had unconsciously transmitted the breakdown code upon arrival, triggering cascading failure through vulnerable alien systems. These fortuitous openings must not go wasted. Stabilizing hands against a nearby bulkhead, Eva surveyed the mustering armada, her reckless smile promising vengeance. She may have arrived here alone, lacking resources or weapons for any grand campaign. No chance remained to ever see Earth again. But it chushed onto Eva's heart lay unbreakable faith in human courage and resilience. Perez had shown the way past despair. And far above this cold orbital shipyard, beckoned endless stars no alien could ever claim. She was still alive and armed, with a functioning comm system relaying formation coordinates from this regional hub. Where Eva passed, alien dominion must surely die. Let them tally the cost tally when Earth's future stood secure against all monstrous threats. Eva laughed aloud, her bold rallying cry issuing unheard into endless vacuum as she pushed off, gliding into destiny's embrace. Eva pulled herself through smoldering wreckage, traversing the alien command carrier's ravaged passageways. She had overridden a bulkhead into officer quarters, finding an empty combat mech walker standing dormant inside a maintenance bay. Now, to escape this fiery death trap and find some way to punish the invasion forces preparing to leave dock. She scrambled up the walker's side. The hatch cockpit hissed open, alien script scrolling. Ava's translator implant decoded startup sequences which she initiated. Crimson luminescence bathed the compact chamber as hollow displays activated around hand grips and pedals. Eva grasped control handles, responsive joysticks giving sensations of the heavy mech rousing to life around her. She cycled visual magnifiers, identifying capital ships maneuvering away from the expanding flames. Assault transports were already peeling off, packed with cybernetic assassins and proton artillery. Eva targeted the largest vessel, a swollen mothership surrounded by bristling escorts. Rangefinder glyphs highlighted vulnerable thruster assemblies along its aft spine. They want an antimatter reactor overload? I'll give them a taste, Eva resolved bitterly. Her walker's shield bubble flickered online as she opened fire. Incandescent rail slugs crossed kilometers in heartbeats, bursting against antimatter containment fields. Alarms shrieked through the mothership's jammed comm bands. Escorts began converging as Eva concentrated bombardment against one shield quadrant. Her hijacked mech possessed fearsome offensive punch, but only light armor. She must end this quickly before massed weapons cracked open her cockpit like an eggshell. Gritting her teeth, Eva activated short-range jump protocols embedded in the Walker OS wetware. Instantly, she quantum transitioned across several clicks, reappearing almost against the mothership's vast hull. Eva fired point-blank, breaching smashed containment to melt tangled infrastructure openings. Through swirling debris, she glimpsed pulsing light, the antimatter generation chamber. But static washed across cockpit displays, her jump ruptured shield projectors. Eva was exposed now to direct weapons impacts. Haunted cries erupted around her. Cybersynths! The mothership had released hunter packs to eliminate her makeshift siege engine. 
Ava spun her mech awkwardly. Pulverizers and plasma casters shattering polycrete underfoot. She couldn't stand and fight. They would overwhelm through attrition. Instead, she slammed booted feet sideways into the mothership's armored hull, metal protesting with resounding pangs. Sparks flew as razor claw extensions at Eva's walker knees shrieked against the alien alloy. Molecular bonds weakened under that intense friction, and Eva redoubled her efforts. Breach warnings flashed critical across cockpit arrays. Alien barrier plating began crumbling, unable to withstand such concentrated force. With a final, adamantium-sheathed kick, the surface ruptured. Klaxons added to cacophony as Ava fired retro-maneuvering jets, blasting into sudden atmosphere. Debris peppered, admitting passageways before secondary bulkheads arrested explosive decompression. But Eva was inside. She triggered every weapon system, unleashing a torrent of firepower down gleaming corridors. The Walker OS projected optimal damage spreads as Eva targeted combustible materials, data conduits, life support systems, and anything else vital. External laceration wounds had taken hold, now for gut wounds. Through oily smoke, alien forms lumbered into view. Eva's pulse raced, recognizing dedicated assault cadres. No mere watchstanders, these trained killers carried integrated fusion casters and warfare barrier generators. They moved deceptively fast, splitting to divide her fire zones. Eva jinked left, detonating a plasma magazine with accurate railgun slugs. No effect. Her rounds spent themselves against overlapping force fields. These professional soldiers had adapted to human weapons. Eva felt her mech shudder under blistering return fire. Her hijacked walker lacked thick armor or layered shield projectors. She couldn't win this standoff. Harried from multiple sides, Eva fired blindly with each weapon in turn. Takes him down before the rest, tear open her hull like razor jaws. Containment warnings flared across the cockpit. Damn, her core shield grid was failing. These implacable hunters were inside her perimeter now, moving surely to crippling effect. Carefully placed shots took out mobility actuators in her right leg. Eva crashed down, return fire slackening. Hunter packs moved closer through dissipating smoke. One raised a heavy cannon, disdainfully, ready to scrap her immobilized walker at leisure. Eva bared clenched teeth. They wanted her dead in a wrecked shell? She would ride this makeshift tomb straight down alien throats. With defiant laughter, she keyed an emergency purge, funneling all remaining drive plasma into weakened antimatter storage tanks nearby. Triggers locked open and converted rail slugs flamed out on shredder trajectories. Her jury-rigged munitions lacked precision fuse coordination, but Eva would see that damned core erupt, gutting this entire mothership sector. Containment fields wavered as high-velocity slugs tore open convoluted piping. Eva's cockpit strobed lightning bright under catastrophic energy discharge. Her Walker OS screamed multiple overpressure alarms before dying. Through flash blindness, Eva glimpsed the alien hunter leader penetrating her buckling canopy seal. She tried triggering makeshift detonators. Darkness took her under pounding fists. Eva floated in howling chaos, her body limp and unresponsive. Raging atmospheric fires scored twisted bulkheads nearby, as enormous detonations continued ripping the alien dreadnought apart section by section. Secondary explosions from incinerated escort craft added to the ongoing cataclysm. Rail rounds could never trigger this scale devastation, even against antimatter stockpiles. Something more fueled this! Dazed memories prompted Eva. Her jury rigged munitions had breached containment, but not caused raw matter to antimatter contact. Was her ensured detonation interacting catastrophically with exotic power cells and ordnance scattered throughout nearby vessels? Given alien vessel proximity while massing for interstellar departure, the erupting dreadnought had spawned a chain reaction, gutting a significant enemy battle group. However unconscious, Eva had exacted devastating vengeance for Perez, Patel, and all the others. Her struggling senses took in greater signs of catastrophe through smoke stinging her nostrils. Debris collisions resounded while flaming shards caromed everywhere. Entire assault waves had been reduced to expanding vapor. Structural members, 
many taller than skyscrapers, began toppling ponderously. Escape pods jettisoned in all directions. Cyber troops scrambled across ruptured hangar spaces. Overmatched alien commanders would be hard-pressed containing the ongoing mass emergency. Surely total fleet readiness was crippled now before invaders could depart, loaded with conquest apparatus. So Earth had time after all, a chance to bolster defenses or unlock portal secrets for a counter-strike with Eva, somehow still drawing breath to assist recovery efforts. Surely she hadn't sacrificed everyone only for overall defeat, had she? Doubts resurfaced that her impulsive attack, however damaging, could fully stop what must ultimately be a vast colonial expedition. How were uncounted alien armadas still denied final victory? But with consciousness fading from neurological trauma and blood loss, Eva couldn't voice the burning questions. Heavy footfalls echoed on scarred decking nearby. An imposing warrior form emerged from smoke and sparks, regarding Eva's broken body with baleful intent. Even laying helpless, she recognized the alien supreme commander, somehow surviving antimatter fires consuming its fearsome mothership. Smoldering rents marked cybernetic armor, and oily fluids sheeted from beneath. Yet still, it retained lethal strength and purpose, judging by the furious glare bent on her. Deliberate steps brought armored hooves to within crushing distance of Eva's vulnerable skull. She wondered bitterly why it hesitated. But words followed instead, translated by her damaged neural implant. You swarm too slowly to comprehend scope of our purpose. Eva struggled responding, her alien adversary's machine-augmented voice grating harshly. What could it possibly mean except empty boasting? The scarred commander leaned closer. We sanitized your remote outpost, then pursued shock troops through the conduit you opened. One heavy claw clamped Eva's throat in emphasis. Did you truly believe such insignificant numbers comprised our conquering vanguard? Vanguard! Eva's heart turned to stone. The implications staggered her. Had everything, all the horrific struggle and loss, been for nothing? The alien warlord confirmed her choked fears. Now your location is fixed. The true fleet follows in our wake to reap this system. One, Talon tipped Ava's chin almost gently as her vision darkened. When armadas beyond counting arrive, your worlds will die screaming. With callous force, the commander hammered one piston-driven fist down, shattering Eva's chest cavity in a spray of blood and bioplastics. Consciousness fled in a scarlet tide. Her last sight was a beacon activator glowing ominously inside her wounds, a pulsing locator guidance system set to bring Earth's new masters screaming out of the abyssal dark between galaxies. She had failed utterly after all.